It's the most important thing that's going on in the silver market is the rigging of the price. Now it's gotten to be the worst of all time relative to fundamentals. I've never seen the manipulation worse than we have now. They don't want it to rise because it, 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 it insinuates inflation, higher interest rates, that something is bad. If gold goes up, it's always bad. If gold goes down, it's good. We're going to go after silver and squeeze silver. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Today, I have Bill Murphy on with me. He is the founder of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, or GATA. Bill wrote a bunch of essays back in the 90s about the collusion to control the price and supply of gold. GATA helped sue the Bank for International Settlements, BIS. That lawsuit was litigated in the U.S. District Court in Boston from 2000 to 2002. GATA has collected and published dozens of documents showing Western Treasury and Central Bank efforts to intervene against a free market in gold. Manipulation. And Bill Murphy has been fighting to expose this for decades. Hi, Bill. Welcome to Yankee Stacking. It's a real honor to have such a knowledgeable and, I have to say, famous person on my channel. Great to be here, Yankee. <laughs> and to be perfectly frank, too, with you, it's always nice to have someone on that's older than me. So. <laughs> I'm older than everybody now. How could that have happened? <laughs> older and wiser, okay? Well, wiser, but older for sure. <laughs> Bill, your legacy uh, has been largely your incredible battle against the gold manipulation going on in the markets, central banks, shoot, even governments. In a nutshell, what have you learned over the years about this manipulation and what, if anything, has changed? Well, it's, it's what we've learned over 22 years now, my, my colleague Chris Powell and myself, is how egregious this whole manipulation thing is. It's actually worse than we even thought of in the beginning. And we've had lawsuits and we've been to Washington many times and met the Congress and uh, met with the CFTC. I've been there twice with Bart Shelton and been on the C-SPAN and doing all kinds of things to expose the manipulation of the gold and silver prices by what I call the gold cartel. Mm -hmm. And that is the uh, Fed and the Treasury, the bullion banks in the U.S. like J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, the Bank for International Settlements and other central banks. And uh, we've been <clears throat> doing what we can to expose it for over two decades. And it's it's just remarkable. And now it's gotten to be the worst of all time relative to fundamentals. I've never seen the manipulation worse than we have now because this year, the gold price has gone down after the first day, like 170 bucks. Silver has gone down also a little bit. I mean, nothing sideways. And then you, you, when you look at what lumber did, crude oil's done, other commodity prices. I mean, it's just it's, it just it makes you speechless. I've never been so angry over a period of time in my whole life. And this past week was the worst beyond comprehension. You did mention Chris Powell, your colleague, uh, the uh, secretary and treasurer of GATA. Yep. He once said something I love. He says, governments go out of their way to downplay the value of gold, but every nation wants it. They just don't want people to want it. I love that. Well, you know, Chris is a smart guy and uh, uh, he knows what he's talking about. And basically, you know, it's like Paul Volcker said in 1980, I believe, he said, the biggest mistake I made was letting the gold price rise. They don't want it to rise because it, 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 it insinuates inflation higher interest rates, that something is bad. If gold goes up, it's always bad. Gold goes down, it's good. So they've gotten into this habit for so many years, and they're the ones who keep selling uh, in the paper market to drive the price down. And, and quite frankly, it influences, and like you have to say, mm -hmm. the physical market, because people go, whoa, I don't want to be in this. Look how terrible the price is. Exactly. It gives it a black eye. And, it gives you know, it a black eye. And, and you're, you're talking to a, um, a stacker, right? You, you know that term, gold and silver stacker. We love our precious metals in this community. And we actually love our silver a lot too. And while I think gold is undeniably controlled, what is your take on 
<laughs> what is likely the most shorted asset in the world, Bill? Silver. It is mind-boggling how bad this is. Led by J.P. Morgan, uh, which has been fined, by the way, $920 million for awesome. part of their rigging in the market. Awesome. It's, it's remarkable what they do. They, they're just leading the selling on the COMEX, which affects the physical market, and bury it. I mean, just last week, within three days, they sold when the silver was around 28. Finally, finally, looking just half decent. They sold 14,000 contracts on the COMEX, meaning the open interest of longs and shorts. That's how much it went up. And they just after yesterday covered the 14,000 contracts as silver was bombed for $2 in a few days. And, and or a day. I mean, it, the, the, it, it's so egregious, egregious, it's beyond comprehension. But it keeps going on. And no matter how much we, I write about it, talk about it, and Chris gets a hold of the media, they, nobody will mention it. It's like it doesn't even happen. It's the most important thing that's going on in the silver market is the rigging of the price. I don't know if you are familiar with Wall Street Silver on Reddit. Sure. Absolutely. The self-described uh, silverbacks, they are passionate about squeezing the short positions in silver. They want to expose the COMEX. Do you think that's possible, Bill? Well, here's what's interesting. Me too, of course, and been at it a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, God bless these guys. I, I salute them big time. You look at what happened in, in this other stock that people talk about, the meme stocks, the Philip M stocks, or AMC and GameStop. They went have to squeeze them, and guess what? Squeeze straight up. So we're going to go after silver and squeeze silver. <laughs> up, down. Mm -hmm. And that's, they know now, uh, what we're up against now, as disgusted as I am, I've been looking for silver to head towards 100 for years, uh, quite frankly, way too early. Mm -hmm. and there's no doubt in my mind that's what's going to happen. And the longer this farce, as I call it, goes on, and the price 26, it's always at 26. When it, when it goes, it's going to explode. And yeah. it's going to be sensational like people have rarely seen. But getting there... It's a real pain in the butt. It's a patience game, isn't it? It really tries people's patience, especially those that are looking like this as a stock, trying to get in and out quick, trade it, make a quick buck. And it isn't. It's, it is something that requires a lot of patience. It's a long-term play. It's an understatement these days. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Last Wednesday, uh, the 16th of uh, June, Fed Chair Jerome Powell caused some uh, uh, excitement, I guess is the best way to say it. It is amazing to me that with all the Federal Reserve gets wrong, seemingly every prediction they ever make, that the markets just hang on every syllable that comes out of the uh, Federal Reserve chairman. It, it, it's crazy. Well, I think the same thing. To, to, for markets to get excited about the Fed saying they're going to raise interest rates in two to two and a half years, are you kidding me? We don't know what they're going to do in, in a day or two. It, 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 I've never seen anything so ridiculous in all my life. It, what are people talking about? They're not going to raise interest rates next week or next month, maybe in two years. What? The consensus on the mainstream media was that Jerome was being hawkish. That, you know, he is... Uh, you know, he was he had strapped on his monetary work belt and he was ready to whip out all those Fed tools and do whatever it needed. And everyone was talking about, ooh, he's so hawkish. He wasn't hawkish. Yeah, I mean, you just said it perfectly. I couldn't do any better than that. He wasn't hawks. I mean, they're talking about what might happen in two years. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it was the most absurd thing and it was just, you know, set up. And of course, the, uh, uh, the cartel, as I call it, the gold people, oh, they can't wait. The cell go. Now, wait a second. We just went through the past most inflationary stuff you can ever imagine. Gold and silver do nothing. And then they crash on speculation what happened in my habit in two years. I mean, I've never been so angry and frustrated. It really does, uh, you know, hit people hard when, when they're trying to stack this stuff, right? You know, of course it does because, you know, you, you, you think you're. you're Think you're doing the right thing, and then you go look at the price the next day for no reason to collapse, and you go, "What am I doing in this?" I mean, look what the stock markets have done this year. Look at what other commodity prices have done this year. Look what the cryptos did. Uh, I was at a conference, I don't know, four or five years ago in Acapulco, and it was a crypto gold conference, and they crypto people were all excited because 
Bitcoin finally got to 1240, the same price as gold. Now they're all excited. And I'm looking at them like this, and I'm not excited at all at 1240 gold. And now we're years later, and then I hear uh, Bitcoin's crashed to 35,000. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, how would you like to say gold crashes to 35,000? I mean, I respect the people. I didn't do it. Uh, I'm a gold silver guy, and yeah. I think in the end I'm going to be a happy camper when silver gets to 100. But for now, this is this is very frustrating. But I know there are a lot of people out there. Some probably listening to this video right now. They're saying, Bill. We've had the worst market shock since the Great Depression, the most severe health crisis in like 100 years, and the biggest monetary response since World War II. If that can't push gold to $3,000 or silver to $50 an ounce, what is it going to take, Bill? It's very simple. Honestly, pardon me, this is my opinion. Okay. The gold cartels, I call it, has to blow up. They have to run out of physical supply thanks to your stacker crowd and others. They just, right now, they're, they're, somehow they're getting enough physical supply to feed their paper selling. And it, the, the, the physical market is not strong enough to counter that. Otherwise, you would have big arbitrageurs buying the paper and selling the physical. I mean, that's what you would do. One's up here and right. one's down here. Buy cheap, sell high. They scare everybody out of physical trading and stuff like that. Not everybody, but a certain amount. Once they when they bury the paper price and that affects the physical market, and that's what's happening. Why we haven't got the rally? And now I really do believe that they're going through all sorts of hidden supply, and it's just gonna it's gonna end up on fumes, and then gold and silver go bananas out of nowhere. Something else is coming up at the end of this month, and it's Basel three. Some major uh, regulations due to take effect. So I've been really concerned about it for three or four months, saying. You know, because on the surface of it, it's about as bullish a thing as you can imagine. Because what they're talking about, a lot of these dealers, are, they, they sell gold and they call it an unallocated accounts. I mean, they sell the same gold over and over again and just say, people, you have gold and you own it, but it's not specifically in your own account. <clears throat> so years ago, we, we did a thing in front of the CFTC and, and uh, came out that... Uh, uh, the, the amount might be 100 to 1 mm -hmm. unallocated or allocated. Now some people say it's 200 to 300. So the idea through this Basel 3 is they're going to make gold a tier 1 asset instead of tier 3, which I mean the restrictions of what you have to do to qualify for that are different and they're tightening up. So the unallocated gold over a period of time starting uh, a week from Monday is to be switched into allocated gold. And so otherwise your costs are going to be too high. So therefore, they, something has to be done to buy back all that gold. So it, theoretically, if it's what it's supposed to be, the price should be moving up nicely ahead of this announcement. It's only the announcement is made, but the impl impl implementation of this, not collapsing, going straight down. Right. So my worst concerns I've had for months are, are being uh, materialized. So am I right then that gold in its unallocated paper contracts form will no longer be considered an equal asset to the physical bullion. Correct. And does that mean that uh, banks that use the paper contract form of gold, right, to, to help meet their reserve requirements are going to have to convert those positions to physical metal? That's how I understand it. Isn't that going to make the unallocated gold trading that they do insanely expensive well that's the reason that they, they're being forced to do it that's correct and it's going to make it whatever they're they, however they, they do their cost of business it's going to make it go way up so this should be incredibly bullish but i don't trust these people to do anything that's bullish and sure enough right ahead of it gold's collapsed it, it's amazing to me that that would that's happen how, that's how wrong this whole thing is and getting worse that years ago uh jp morgan stanley was fined millions of dollars for selling the same silver, not telling people, and charging people storage. <laughs> they were selling the same silver to thousands of people and just, you know, not buying it. So and they got in trouble for it. So what should us silver and gold stackers do right now, Bill? <laughs> I'm prejudiced as can be, you know. And it's giving it a tremendous buying opportunity for both gold and silver. I mean, it's that simple. Uh, <laughs> I hate to see it go down like this, but 
for the people who have some cash to put in the markets, uh, what a great time to be buying gold and silver. Bill, I really appreciate your, your battle. Uh, fighting the good fight and making us aware of what's going on for many years. Great job. How would people, uh, you know, read more about what you're doing and getting in, you know, follow you, your insights? Well, I've been doing the thing called the Metropole Cafe. I write commentary every day uh, for 22 years. People can sign up uh, and get a two-week free trial. And then uh, Goddard.org org, is run by Chris Powell. That's a free site. They can just sign up and get on the mailing list and he does a great job of getting information out and we keep people informed, do the best we can. And been at it a long time now and uh, uh, we're going to keep at it till we win. All right. Thank you so much for well, thank joining you me. For what, what you and all your guys do and keep up the stacking. Wow. What incredible insights. The battle goes on against gold and silver manipulation. So don't forget to hit the like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out the description of this video for a lot of information that might be handy for you, including Bill Murphy's information. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay. <laughs>